Good morning, indie fans. It's Wednesday, the 21st of April, and it's time for the third episode of Davy PhD's Twitter Twits. In this feature, I examine the Twitter feeds from our unionist chums and poke some gentle and, crucially, non-controversial and less sweary fun at them. This week, it's a Fitbar special, which is a bit of a shocker, as I generally hate Fitbar. But let's begin with Scott's Tory branch office supervisor, Dross MP, who, for about the third or fourth time, has already conceded the Holyrood election. He knows he can't win, so the limit of his ambition is to stop the SNP getting a majority. In related news, I hear that Jose Mourinho got the sack. Again. But guess who isn't getting Jose Mourinho's job? That's right, Dross MP isn't. Because Dross MP wouldn't actually want to win matches or even draw them. A football team managed by Dross MP would be happy with a loss. As long as it wasn't a total humping. 3-1 should be okay. Now this week, we also had the announcement of the Euro Super Duper League or whatever it was. In Fitbar circles, it has not gone down well. And as you can imagine, some in politics put their oar in too. Let's start with Ronald Villiers. Oh, sorry, I mean, George Galloway, who tweeted this. Football, the game we all love, the game that we invented, that we exported to the world, the greatest, most beautiful game, is being destroyed in front of our eyes by cutthroat corporates, oligarchs and spivs. Hashtag boycott European Super League. Fair comment, George, but why this photo? I mean... There are no Scottish clubs in said Super Duper League, and let's face it, there never would be. So why that choice of photo? I'm pretty sure that none of this was the dastardly work of Nicola Sturgeon or the SNP. But it was gratifying to see this mantle taken up by a more serious politician. No, it wasn't Dross MP, but his more capable and formidable predecessor. No, 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 Jackson Carlo, the other one, Barnes Ruth Davidson. Barnes Davidson saw this video of my new legend, Gary Neville. It's difficult not to get emotional and feel sick, but honestly, you've got a right to your MPs, you've got a, your local football clubs, you've got a right, everybody's got to come behind this. Pundits for BBC, ITV, BT Sport, forget allegiances. Forget who you support. We have got to come together to stop this proposal. This is an attack on everything that's been important in this country. Football has helped in the last 10 months in the midst of a pandemic more than ever keep people going. And they're trying to take it away from us. I feel slightly complicit. I've stayed pretty quiet in terms of the Glazer family over the years. Stay pretty quiet because I've thought when the club were taken over as a PLC that you knew it could be bought and it was out of the control of players, of fans, of everybody. I believe in a free market, generally in life. And I've always thought, what's the answer to the Glazers? Who takes them out? Russia, China, state money for the two or three billion quid it would need. And I've stayed quiet on, a, on the basis that it's still Manchester United. I can still go and watch the lads play. I can be happy and I can be sad. I'm still watching football in this country. If they take dividends out, all right, it's dividends. I can live with it slightly. But what I can't live with is attacking every single football fan in this country. They have stepped over the mark. They are scavengers. And they need booting out of this football club and they need booting out of this country. And we have got to come together now. It, it might be too late. There'll be people at Manchester United, fans who were arguing 15 years ago, who will say, it's too late. It's never too late. We have got to stop this. It is absolutely critical we do. After seeing this, the Baroness retweeted her take on the situation. And I just had to respond. I have to say, Baroness Davidson, I don't usually agree with you, but both Gary Neville and you are 100% right. I kind of stand fit, Bob, but many people enjoy it, and this super-duper Euroleague thingy would just take it further and further away from its working-class roots. And that's just not fair. After all, us working class people have little to look forward to in Tory Britain. Stagnating wages and the worst pension in the OECD, the very least us working class folk should have is the enjoyment of Fitbar. I mean, 
I think you're just the person to lead this crusade. Once you get your fancy cloak and all that, you could team up with Gary Neville and get all the big corporations out of Fitbar, send the Glazers and Fenway Sports Group, etc. packing. Just like Gary said, out of football and out of the country. And once you've got that done, I've got another similar mission for you. Perhaps you could use that experience of clearing corporations out of the beautiful game and do a similar job in our politics. Surely our national discourse should not be unduly sullied by the cash of large corporations. Why should, for example, Lord Bamford of JCB Machines be allowed to purchase influence to the tune of £3.4 million just because he has it to spare? Surely this isn't fair to the millions of normal folk voting that people like Lord Bamford can purchase influence when all they can do is vote for it, only to be disappointed like our fishermen who voted Tory just because they wanted a better deal. Just think how lovely our fit bar and our politics could be, unsullied by corporate interests. So what say you, Baroness Davidson? You up to this task? Can I look forward to Baroness Ruth Davidson cleaning up FITMA and then cleaning up politics? I look forward to your progress. Or was this just an offhand tweet to curry favour with the FITBA supporting public? Haven't you forgotten that you're a life peer now? You don't need to win votes anymore. Now I don't know about you lot, but I can't wait for Baroness Davidson to check in with me on her dual missions to clean up football and politics. Log in next week for the next edition of Twitter Twits. Davy PhD.